evening from the News Radio, 1120 AM and 93.7 FM, KPNW Studios. I'm Bill London, also known as the co host of the Wake Up Call, heard Monday through Friday morning, 6 AM to 9 on this fine radio station, streaming worldwide at KPNW.com. And we're being monitored by the Chinese, according to our analytics. We've got people over in China listening to us. I don't know what that's about, but. It seems ominous. News tonight brought to you by Dr. Michael Bratland of Chris Dental, where if you call him today, he'll see you today. And by the way, very soon, I'm going to be getting my American-made crown. All right, here's a look at some of the stories we're following. Well, it's an important metric of Oregon's low-performing schools, and it was supposed to be released this month. But now it's not. The Oregon Department of Education's annual release of standardized test results from the previous springs not going to be happening, at least for the time being. Instead, the state is delaying its release of the much-watched metric because, well, they need more time to make the presentation of the test data user-friendly. Now, this follows a change after a national study that ranked Oregon among the worst states in the country for student achievement transparency. We're number last. We're number last. The study by the nonpartisan Center for Reinventing Public Education said the state's presentation of test results made it needlessly and almost impossibly difficult for parents and state lawmakers alike to decipher reading and math performance, particularly in the aftermath of the pandemic. Without clear data, Families, district leaders, teachers, and state lawmakers, according to the report, get lulled into a false sense of security about the students' academic prowess, dulling the urgency to grapple with learning loss. That, according to the lead study author, professor of education at USC and the School of Education there, Morgan Polakoff. So, in other words, yeah... We, we can't even do our reports right. Mark Siegel, a spokesman for the Oregon Department of Education, says they don't know how long it's, it's going to take for the agency to release the testing data. And that, of course, carries pretty crucial implications for Oregon's public school system, which literally consumes over a third of the state's budget. And in particular, it comes in a time when people are asking, what is Oregon doing? In 2023, the state, Oregon, was a national outlier where reading and math scores failed to budge from pandemic lows, even though the federal government spent hundreds of millions of dollars in Oregon for use by schools to ensure that its students didn't fall behind but which instead, as we've reported here a number of times, that money was spent for other things like maintenance, raises, things like that. Well, we told you about how Oregon DMV and Oregon's motor voter law actually ended up registering uh, non-citizens to vote, which, well, is illegal to do. The Oregon DMV acknowledged that it realized that it had mistakenly helped register more than 300 non-citizens to vote after a national think tank asked about the department's processes and guardrails. Now, state officials told Oregonians and reporters that when this first came out, that it was an internal audit that was being done by the Oregon Department of Motor Vehicles that revealed the state had registered 306 non-citizens to vote since 2021, based on errors by DMV workers. Governor Tina Kotek, a couple of days later, said in a statement the registration of those non-citizens was, and I'll quote her, discovered because Oregon DMV and the Secretary of State were doing their due diligence ahead of the 2024 election. And now we know that was patently untrue. 
A spokesperson for the Oregon Department of Transportation, which oversees the DMV, said the audit was only conducted because of inquiries from the Institute of Responsive Government, a Chicago nonprofit based on making governments more efficient and accessible. According to Kevin Glenn, a spokesperson for the Oregon Department of Transportation, all of those questions prompted us to analyze our records to see if we were having issues. So it wasn't anybody's due diligence. He said, due to the importance of the issue, then we looked into our automatic voter registration process to determine if there were anomalies, and well, there were. Now, as we told you last week, there were 306. Well, guess what? More have been found. 1,236 now. Actually, 1,259 have been found at this point. Now, Lane County, for instance, here in, of course, Oregon, discovered when all of this was found out, that 11 non-U.S. citizens had been registered. Now they are saying they found another 35. And that brings the total to 46. And guess what? They know that at least one of them voted. Now, right now, Lane County says that they're trying to remove all of these people from the active voter rolls. And that person that did turn in a ballot that shouldn't have done so, well, they say they're working to contact that person who is out of state. Now, here's a question. Even if that person hadn't had been a legal citizen of the United States, why were they still on the voter rolls to begin with for the state of Oregon? Lane County Elections says they're committed to an accountable elections process. Well, U.S. District Judge Michael Simon denied a motion for a preliminary injunction that was brought about by Oregon business owners who argued that the Corporate Transparency Act violated their constitutional rights with its requirements to report sensitive personal identifying information. Now, this act requires businesses in the United States to file what is called beneficial ownership information about the owners, officers, and others with a controlling interest with the U.S. Treasury's Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. Now, what his decision means is that the federal act now could actually enforce federal drug laws, for instance, against Oregonians who own marijuana or psilocybin businesses, or pursue the deportation of people in the country illegally who are actually operating businesses in Oregon. Well, I think we told you about Oaks Amusement Park. Well, they're now suing the company that built the Atmosphere ride for its malfunction earlier this year. That malfunction left about two dozen people hanging upside down over the tarmac for almost an hour. Now Oaks Park is suing the ride's manufacturer, a company called Zamperla, out of Italy, and they're claiming Zamperla bears the full responsibility for the ride's breakdown. Oaks Park, by the way, is also looking at a lawsuit from the family of a 14-year-old boy who was on the ride and hung upside down for a long time. So Portland's peaceful protesters that are protesting and had for the rights of Palestinians in Gaza, well, they left over $1,233,000 and still counting in damages to Portland State University's Miller Library, which now finally has been reopened to the public after being shut down for four months for repairs and maintenance due to campus protests. The protesters took over the library and caused, as you can tell by the dollar amount, quite a bit of devastation. The occupation by the pro-Palestinian peaceful protesters left significant damage to every floor of the library. The library suffered damage to the walls, the paint, the floors, the furniture, the books, the electronics, the phones, the lighting, and the fire system. In May, the fire marshal went through the building and declared it uninhabitable. 
Staff noted that they're still waiting on a number of other things to bring the library to 100% completion. Once again, Portland's peaceful protesters. While kind of an interesting race for mayor in Portland, and one of the leaders, at least in according to uh, polling, would be Carmen Rubio. And first it was announced that she had racked up 150 parking and driving tickets. Then it came out that she failed to show for court appearances. And then it came out that her license had been suspended six times and that her car had been towed due to failing to pay thousands of dollars in fines and fees, and that she was taken to collections over 100 times for failure to pay those fines. Then, last Friday, it also came to light, because of security cam footage in a parking lot, that she ran into and damaged a 2002, uh, 2022 parked Tesla and walked around it, looked at it, and then walked away without leaving a note, all of it caught on security camera footage. And now, after being caught and being outed by the media for actually damaging a car and walking away from it, she's saying, well, I'll do what I can to try and make it good. Speaking of which, Governor Tina Kotek, when asked about all of this foolishness and whether she still endorses Rubio's for Portland mayor, well, she said, well, yes, of course I do, because she gets things done. Insert your own joke. And finally, of course, it would be in Portland. We've gone through a period of four years where hard street drugs were essentially legalized here in the state of Oregon, and only recently were they kind of recriminalized. Well, now, after all of that, after, of course, mega overdoses, outdoor drug markets in Portland that police couldn't break up because it was illegal, now, coming to a ballot in Portland... Advocates for psychedelic drugs want to put an initiative on the city's ballot that would protect people who use what they call non-addictive psychedelic drugs from arrest. The preamble of the draft says, quote, It supports the autonomy to explore one's consciousness and connection to a higher power. If the Portland Psychedelic Health Act lands on the Portland ballot, it would be yet another salvo in Oregon's efforts to essentially do away with drug laws, like happened in 2020 with ballot measure 110, which only this year was rolled back because, well, it's been an utter disaster. Under the proposed new initiative, psychedelics would be designated as safe. Police officers would have to put it as their lowest priority for enforcement. That's according to the draft initiative. Portland would be required to, quote, expend no funds, equipment, personnel, or other resources to investigate, detect, apprehend, arrest, or prosecute anyone for having, growing, gathering, gifting, or using psychedelics. What could go wrong? All right, Rick, time for you to get real. The Insane Oregon News brought to you by Dr. Michael Brathland, who apparently actually sponsors this because he just likes to sit there going. Back to you, Rick.